Yo, yo, yo. The fellas are back. All right. It's fight week. They're getting down in London town, UFC 286. And the geeks are here to break down the early prelims and prelims for you. Uh, I'm Goosey. We got CEO and we got Dano. All right. First fight of the night. We're just going to jump into it. We got Juliana Miller and uh, Mrs. Hardy, Veronica Hardy. I'm sure Dan Hardy will be in attendance for this. Starting off with my thoughts here. Who knows? All right. I think Juliana Miller, she's probably going to win, but she's like a massive favorite and has no stand-up game. So that's interesting. But to this point, Veronica Hardy hasn't been great with the takedowns. I think that Juliana Miller, she pushes a good pace. She will get to top position. And then she does have a very good grappling game. Um Minus 500 worth? I don't think so, but the pick is still going to be Juliana Miller over Veronica Hardy in this one. So, uh, CEO, what do you got? I'm rocking Juliana Miller. I think I think that she's just going to be better. And, you know, even that stand-up that's so sus, I think she's been getting good work. And I think that, you know, she's pretty good at keeping distance with, like, teep kicks and whatnot. Uh, I think that she's just going to be, you know – that that more of a killer in the octagon um i watch a lot of the dan hardy full reptile stuff and she's like a smart gal like don't get me wrong she's she's good she'll probably put up a pretty decent fight it'll probably be a really close scrap just like every other boot and uh and she'll probably make it tough for her but i think juliana miller edges it out dana we're kicking it to you boss yeah, I'm with you guys. I like Juliana Miller, and I like her by decision. Um, she was the tough winner, um, and she fought Brogan Walker in that tough finale, and she finished her late, but it was just kind of like didn't seem too dangerous, and then it all came crashing down at the end. I don't think Juliana Miller, unless, like CEO was saying, she's been getting better in her time off. She's not really too much of a threat on the feet. And on the ground, I just think that Veronica will be able to survive. So I'm taking Juliana Miller decision. Yeah, Juliana Miller. She also throws those Juliana Pena one twos. But hey, they took her all the way to a uh, belt around her waist. So we'll see. Moving on to the next one. We got Jai Herbert and Ludovic Klein. I think I'm going to go with Ludovic Klein here, all right? Something in my gut was telling me Jai Herbert because he does do a very good job of keeping distance. But when guys are really bringing a grappling game plan, mixing it up up top, he tends to get shy and the output really slows down for him. He does throw a good jab, one-two. Uh, he's got some good kicks, as Ilya Tapiria knows, but... If you can get it to the second and third rounds, Jai Herbert starts to wear down. I think he's a big dude for lightweight. He's got a pretty big cut. And uh, once we start getting into the later rounds, he really fades. Ludovic Klein, on the other hand, very well-rounded game, explosive athlete in there. And uh, we saw in his last fight, he can push a pace for three rounds. So I think Ludovic Klein is going to be the pick for me here. What do you got, Dano? I'm taking Lu Ludovic Klein as well. Jai Herbert, he he gives me big Derek Lewis vibes in the sense that Derek Lewis does not win in Texas and Jai Herbert does not win in England. Of course, both their home hometowns, home countries, whatever. Um, but Jai Herbert just doesn't do good in England, doesn't do good in London, especially on these London cards. So I think Ludovic Klein will continue that uh, success for opponents against Jai Herbert. I think Ludwig Klein is a very good kickboxer and he's not too bad on the on the ground either, but I think this fight will mainly take place on the feet. I think this fight will end in a finish, so I'm going to take Ludwig Klein under two and a half and just let his, uh, his style go to work against uh, Herbert. CEO, let's hear it. Yeah, honestly, man, um, Ludwig Klein, I feel like, is a guy that, you know, can be like overwhelmed um, and I think that Jai Herbert is going to be, you know, putting him in some serious danger in this fight. I think that, you know, early in the beginning of the first round, um, Herbert's definitely live to, to do something crazy. And then, you know, maybe later, 
But, you know, once Ludwig Klein settles in, he, he is good at, you know, really controlling guys against the cage and really, you know, staying off that pressure, just just getting points, scoring. Um, so I think Ludwig Klein wins the majority of this fight, but I do think Jai Herbert's got to find a finish. Uh, I just see holes in Klein's game, like that Mason Jones fight, like very late. I know the killer, the dragon is pissed about, you know, how that all went down. But, you know, he jumped, you know, for a guillotine or something. You know, he pulled guard or whatever it was, and, and he was starting to piece up Klein at the end of that third round. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, if something happens. So I'm taking Jai Herbert. Boys are 2-1. It's going to be a close fight. Who knows what's going to happen. But we're jumping into the next one. We got Joanne Wood versus Luana Carolina. I believe Jan Joanne Wood is going to be a minus 185 favorite. I'm taking the underdog. All right. I think Luana Carolina, Carolina gets a little bit of a bad rep. Okay. Molly McCann in London, something special. All right. She put on a good fight. She had all the hype around her. I think that uh, it's hard to settle in under those circumstances, you know. To this point in her UFC career, Luana Carolina has some good wins. She's put some good performances together, specifically a stylistic matchup that I like to compare for this one is she has a win over Priscilla Cachoeira, which she brings a heavy boxing style, maybe not as many kicks as – uh. Joanne Wood's going to bring, but I think that Carolina does a good job keeping it at range. She can stop the takedowns. I don't really think she'll be throwing any of her own, but in what should be a stand-up fight, I think that Carolina is pretty technical, and she's 29 years old. Joanne Wood, on the other hand, we are seeing a decline. She's getting up there in the 30s now, all right, and it leads me to wonder are her best days behind her, you know, Luana Carolina. I think I can, I can depend on what she's bringing in the octagon, obviously a little bit suspect after a clean knockout, but I think she's taking the time off. I think she's going to bounce back well. And at dog value, I'm all over it. What do you got CEO? I'm riding you goosey. Whatever you just said, all those words together. Those are my words as well. I'm riding that. Goosey's seeing the board crystal clear when it comes to the female boots. So I'm going to ride the hot hand. I'm not going to look any further in this fight. I'm just going to, I'm just going to ride. Fire take. Dano, on to you. I'm on the other side. I'm going to take uh, Joanne Wood. I think that she's never had a fight over in Europe in, in the UFC. So I feel like this would be a good little bit of homecoming for her. She'll have a little fire fire under her belt. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think she, <laughs> I think that uh, she's just going to win this fight. I don't even know how she's going to win this fight. I could see this being a totally boring fight. Just takedowns here, stalling some time. Um, because like Goose was saying, John Wood's getting up there in age. She's not too dangerous. It's just one of those fights where I can see her edging out and getting a win. So I'm going to ride with Joanne Wood um, probably by decision. Yep, yep. We are fired up about this fight, as you can tell, but we're moving on to the next one. We're going into Malcolm X. Gordon versus Jake the White Kong Hadley. Interesting bout. I think Jake Hadley wins. Uh, he's just going to be the more dominant presence in the octagon. He's got a little bit of pop on the feet, and he deploys a power grappling game. He tries to get in that top position, get some submissions, but he's not going to choose submission over position, which I like. He does get some good ground and pound, and we see, we've we seen Malcolm Gordon get a little bit overpowered in the octagon. You know, he's very skilled, but he's not the most intimidating presence. He tends to give ground. And I think against a guy like Jake Hadley, that will be his downfall in this one. He, maybe he can evade the submissions and uh, not the best chin, but avoid getting knocked out. If this does go to decision, I still see Jake Hadley winning. So that's going to be the pick. Dana, what do you got for us? I'm riding with Hadley too. Hadley, when he debuted, wasn't what we thought he'd be. And then kind of in his next fight in the UFC, he kind of really turned it up a level. So I'm just kind of putting that as his first UFC debut jitters. 
Um, I think he's a good matchup against Malcolm Gordon just because I'm looking at Malcolm Gordon's record. He beat Francisco Figueredo, which isn't too much of a high praise. And then he has a win against Bondar in the first round. But that was when he was leaning on Bondar and Bondar's arm literally snapped. Um, So that's just a gimme there. But he's lost to Suma Duerge early in the first round. Amir Abazi early. Not early, but in the first round. Um, and then Muhammad Makayev beat up on Malcolm Gordon. Um, so I think that Hadley kind of just fits those guys, especially Amir Abazi and Muhammad Makayev. He kind of just fits the those guys' body types and styles in a way. So I'm going to ride with uh, Jake Hadley. I don't know about inside distance or whatnot, so I'm just going to ride just Jake Hadley. Fire CEO, give us your thoughts. Bro. This is a fight that Jake Hadley definitely on paper, you know, draw. He should win it, but I'm just not sold, man. I look at that number; it's too, it's too, too high. Um, he's not that big of a favor in a fight where he doesn't have as much as experience as people want to give him credit for. Um, Malcolm Gordon is on to the next bursting prospect, trying to ruin dreams, and I think that he's gonna crack the code this time. I think that. He had the little slip up, you know, not the slip up, kind of, kind of a bad run there where he was getting knocked out. But, you know, that last fight with, you know, Makayev, wherever it was, you know, that's going to be the most realistic, you know, comparison in this fight. Like Makayev and Hadley, very similar fight styles, both youthful energy. But I think Makayev's grappling is, is just superior. And I think Makayev's striking superior. So the fact that Gordon was able to hold up like that, and I'm looking at that number. Hadley definitely doesn't have enough check marks next to his name for me to to buy in on that. So I think that Gordon is a live dog by decision. Uh, that's where I would ride it. All right. Hadley's up 2-1 on the board. But that 375 is a little steep. On to the next. We're getting into a pretty solid banger. We're going Omar Morales versus Chris Duncan. Strikers delight, possibly. I don't really think either guy is going to bring a lot of grappling. Uh, if somebody is, it's probably going to be Omar Morales shooting for takedowns. Early on, Omar Morales is probably going to have the edge. He's going to look like the more technical striker. All right, Chris Duncan blocks some punches with his face sometimes, and he ends up wobbling, but somehow he puts it together and just starts slinging haymakers and – Typically, they connect, as we saw in the Contender Series. Um, I think Chris Duncan needs to turn this one into a dogfight. And the dirtier it is, the better it will be for Chris Duncan because we've seen Omar Morales fade in UFC fights. Chris Duncan, he's just got that Scottish dog energy to him. You know, kind of like Paul Craig, but he's a hefty striker. And I think that if it does get down and dirty, I think he's going to clip the chin. So I'm probably going to take Chris Duncan by KO in this one. Uh, CEO, what are your thoughts? Uh, this one's really tough. Um, I'm going to ride Chris Duncan as well. I think that um, he's just the more seasoned guy. And uh, I like his power. I like his stand-up. Let's do it, man. I'm riding Chris Duncan. Not my most confident pick, but I like it. Let's get it. Dan O. I'm with you guys. I like Chris Duncan. When I look at, I'm looking at Omar Morales' record, and he is an older guy. He's getting up there in age, and we're kind of just seeing him start to get a little bit of a decline. See him lost to Giga. Not a bad loss. Um, and then he got knocked down against Jonathan Pierce. Jonathan Pierce choked him out, and then Euros Medics put him out in the second round. So, it's kind of like one of those things, maybe someone I'll something I'll talk about with Usman later on, just kind of once that chin goes, it's kind of tough to really get it back. And we've kind of seen Omar Morales um, not really gain that chin back. He's kind of been, he got put out against Medich. Jonathan Pierce was knocking him around. Um, and then you guys have been singing the praise of Chris Duncan, who hits like a truck. And we've also, if you haven't seen Chris Duncan's contender series fight, is a wild fight where he gets knocked around, but then he comes back and just absolutely starches the dude. Um, 
So we know that Chris Duncan can bounce back. And like Goose was saying, this will be a firefight on the feet. Even if Omar puts Duncan down or knocks him down, takes him down, whatever, I know that Chris Duncan will have that motor going. We'll be able to bounce back. Whereas if we see um, Morales in trouble, it's kind of, you know, you're crossing your fingers if you bet on Morales and he starts getting in trouble. Because so far in his past couple fights, we haven't seen really that bounce back from him. So... I'm going Chris Duncan, definitely going inside distance. I think the uh, London crowd will give him an extra boost, and uh, he'll live up to it. Chris Chris Duncan's up 3-0 on the board. I think we got a little sneak peek into Dano's main event pick, but you're going to have to hit the main card video to see what that is because we're on to the next one. We're going Muhammad Makayev versus Jafel Fioho. All right, and Muhammad Mikhaev is a massive favorite. He is minus 800. He should be. He's, I mean, he's a dominant wrestler. This guy has lost via submission and decision to dominant wrestlers. He gives up powerful positions, and Muhammad Mikhaev is going to take advantage of that. But side note here, he dislocated his shoulder within the past six months. All right, he must think he's ready to go, so I will trust it, and I will give him my pick in this one. But at minus 800, I would not be parting ways with my hard-earned money because all it takes is one false slip in a wrestling exchange for that shoulder to pop out, and we have a potential disaster on our hands. Um, So proceed with caution here, but I think Muhammad Makayev is going to get it done in dominant fashion as long as he stays healthy. Fioho, pretty good striker, but I don't think that the fight will take place on the feet. So uh, that's why I'm going to go with Dana. What do you got for us? Yeah, I'm riding Makai, and I heard about that shoulder thing. So since he's such a lock, what I would look to is I would even sprinkle like a Muhammad Makai of maybe round one. Maybe if you get that option around one and two, because Mac- Muhammad Makayev, he's doing everything right. He's staying real active. He's he's pretty vocal on the social medias and, and calling people out, and he just wants to keep fighting, wants to get in the rankings. Um, he's fighting on pay-per-view cards, which is really good. If that shoulder is a factor, I could definitely you know see him really trying to end the fight early um, rather than play with this food. So if the uh, odds are too much for you guys, I think Muhammad Makayev round one, little sprinkle wouldn't be bad. Or like I was saying, round one and two. Um, early finish for Makai is pretty much what I'm saying. I think that he's going to try and put out another statement here with this one. And uh, we'll see how it goes. CEO. Yeah, I'm riding the same thing. I am riding uh, Makai of round one. Uh, I would say submission, round one sub, if you want to get some real value on it. Just because this guy's grappling is so elite that – um. He he's gonna get so many club and subs in the UFC that uh, I mean, you should just take advantage of it because his his striking is elite, and the second he stuns a dude, wobbles a dude, any anything, you know, any kind of serious damage on the feet, his his initial instinct is gonna be to wrap him up. So this guy's always live for a sub, and uh, I think this is gonna be a great spot for a club and sub round one. This just in, Muhammad Makayev's the pick. All right, we're going on to the next. We got Leron Murphy versus Gabriel Santos. And uh, Gabriel Santos, solid striker, but I think short notice is going to be a bit of a problem for him here. So uh, I'm going to take Leron Murphy. You know what we're, we know what we're going to get from him. Very good on the feet. He can mix it up on the ground. And, uh, He's been training, you know, he was planning to take on someone really good. I'm going to pick it up here, Nathaniel Wood. So he's been anticipating a striking bout. We got Gabriel Santos coming in on short notice, 10 and 0, very solid prospect. He's got a good resume. He's beaten guys 13 and 1, 12 and 2, 12 and 6. Like he's fighting all good, good opponents. He's confident. He's taking good fights. But I still think that Leron Murphy is going to have the answer for him here. A little bit too much sauce. And uh, I'm going to pick the vet to get it done here. CEO, this is going to be your fighter of the week. So let's hear it. 
Yeah, man, I'm a big Lerone Murphy fan. This guy is, is the real deal. Um, I'm I'm just such a big fan of his fight IQ, his his just ring awareness. His this guy's really fucking elusive, and uh, I definitely think he's gonna get a finish in this fight. Uh, he's just gonna keep proving you know the levels that he's that he's growing. Um, but dude, this is a tough matchup. Gabriel Santos is a is a fucking tough dude, um, and this is one of those situations where. You know, Lerone Murphy's been set to fight on this card for a while. And then, you know, his opponent falls out, like you were talking about. He had a big matchup planned. And he he's probably sitting there like, listen, I, I don't care who you find. Um, I need to fight. You know, like I'm putting on for my city that day. So, I mean, the UFC, that's not the easiest fight to match up. You're talking about Lerone Murphy in the UK, one of the biggest prospects, one of the loudest spots, hometown. This is the guy that's coming in. I mean, this is a real deal dude. He he believes he can beat Lerone Murphy. So this is no layup. This is going to look like a layup because it's, oh, he's making his debut, blah, blah, blah. But, dude, this guy is fucking tough, and uh, he's going to come out here and put on a show. So I'm taking Lerone Murphy by spectacular finish, just knowing how tough Gabriel Santos is. It's going to be spectacular. Dana, what do you think? I'm taking Lerone Murphy, too. This one does scare me, though, because Santos has a good record. He's coming in on short notice, which, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, hey, kid, you're debuting. Go make the most of it um, on a pay-per-view in his hometown. Makes me nervous, but I am going to ride with Lerone Murphy, but I'm staying away from it officially. All right, yeah. Lerone Murphy, 11-0-1. Gabriel Santos, 10-0. Someone's O. Has got to go. And we're on to the next one. We got Christian Leroy Duncan versus Dusko Todorovic. All right. Um, Christian Leroy Duncan making his UFC debut. He's coming from the Cage Warriors promotion where he did have a strap around his waist. And I think that he will come in and do good things in the UFC. All right. The film is good. He's very entertaining. He does a lot, a lot of good work on the feet. He puts on for the fans. He will put himself in danger at times. But, hey, that's what we want to see. And he's able to stop the grappling. Um, Dusko, I think if he wants to win this, he's going to have to put a pace on him and out-grapple him. I don't think that's his strength. Typically, he likes a slower-paced fight. He likes to let things play out. He He – likes to determine where the fight is. And if he's not able to get takedowns, which at 12% takedown defense, I think that's going to be tough for him. It could be it could be a quick night because Christian Leroy Duncan comes, he throws some heat, and maybe it was just film. Obviously, Cage Warriors, not the same level of competition as UFC. But from what I've seen, I think he'll be able to hold his own and do well. So I'm going to pick Christian Leroy Duncan. By finish, uh, CEO, what's your take? Yo, pass this off to Dano. I want to go after Dano. Dano. All right, so I'm riding with Leroy Duncan as well. Um, I think he is a dog, even though he, he did come from Cage Warriors. He's fought some crazy dudes, one of them named Magomed Habib Umarov. Those three names in one name as one person, you would think that dude's like some mythical fighter, but no, he he did lose to him. But it's just showing that this dude fights anyone. This dude is a dog. Leroy Duncan. Um, Todorovic, though, you look at his record, he's fought some good guys, but he's got some wins over guys who aren't in the UFC anymore, and the guys who beat him are kind of um, decently big names or just at least still in the UFC. So I think... He's kind of, I hate to say bottom of the barrel for this division, but he's just nothing nothing spectacular. I don't think it's anything hidden right there. He, he's nothing crazy. And if Leroy Duncan is anything, will make himself any name in this UFC. I think he's going to have to beat Dusko. Um, and I think he will beat Dusko. I don't know whether it be decision or not knockout or not but I, I just think that he will beat dusko a good ufc vet um this will be a good test for him so i'm riding with duncan ceo let's hear those thoughts i think dusko's got a little bit left man i think <laughs> dusko's got a little bit left 
Uh, what's the line on this? Duncan's like minus 220. I'm going to check now. Duncan is Christian Leroy Duncan. Christian Leroy Duncan. Minus 210. Dust goes plus 165. All right, so I just want to pitch something for the fellas here. You got a guy named Modestus Bukowskis, all right, in the UFC. Reminds me so much of this guy, Dusko. I don't know why. Just reminds me of him, okay? He gets cut from the UFC, bad skit or whatever. We all know he's, he's pretty good. Bukowskis is a pretty good fighter. You know, he just came back in and made his little statement. I, I'm on the same page as Dusko. I think that he's good. He would do the same thing. Uh, what happened with Bukowskis was he got cut from the UFC. He went to Cage Warriors, all right? He knocked out two dudes, became the, the champion. He got back into the UFC, okay? The level of competition is nowhere close, all right? Dusko's been fighting guys like Chitty, uh, Burial, like, you know, there's just like slur of all these guys, and, you know, we see what they're doing. I think Dusko is going to have the clear uh, experience advantage on the big stage, and I think he pulls through for a big knockout in a fight where they're, they're going to be standing and throwing bomb skis. So give me Dusko, just the more technical, the savvier fighter on the feet. Land a fucking Dusko Durango. Let's get it. The Dusko Durango. There was some heart behind that pick, fellas. Take note. We are on to the next. We got Sam Patterson versus Yanal Ashmuz. I'm seeing you Nal Ashmuz as a popular underdog. I'm going to take the favorite. I'm going to take Sam Patterson. I think that the resume sticks out to me a little more. He's taken more chances. You know, he's constantly fighting top tier opponents. And while he definitely, sh his his weak point is going to be the wrestling. I think his stand up is good enough to keep it at range. His takedown defense is okay. If he doesn't play the jujitsu game, he'll be able to keep it on the feet. And then if it does get to the ground, he uses his length well. He can wrap up some submissions. Yunal Ashmuz, on the other hand, he kind of is a more powerful puncher with good wrestling. He trains at a good gym in New Jersey. He's learned in that good old American wrestling. But – um. I think he's just a little bit young in his career right now, not experienced enough to, for uh, what Sam Patterson's going to have for him. So because of that, proceed with caution. But Sam Patterson's going to be the pick for me. Dano, let's hear those thoughts, brother. I'm I'm taking a schmoose. That's how you say his name. I'm taking him. Shout out to Fish. I know Fish would be all over him. I think this is front kick. Fish's fighter of the week. Um, so I got to back the boy. I think Sam Patterson, like Goose was saying, he's got some length on him, right? We're in the lightweight division. We're talking about, I think he's six foot four in the lightweight division. So he's going to have to be skinny if he's so tall. Um, and he's very hittable. He gets hit. Sam Patterson takes punches. And y'all, uh, Ashmoose, if he can just land a couple punches, get some takedowns incorporated, wrestle a little bit. I think that Patterson's length will kind of be to his demise because if he does get hit, he'll have to start shelling up um, to stop the stop the blows from coming in. And I think Ishmo's got some good leg kicks, seen some footage, got some good body punches. Um, just let out, let the repertoire go for Ishmo's. Um, This will be a dog fight. Sam Patterson is no joke. But he's got some holes in the game, so I'm taking a schmooze to win by decision. We're split, CEO. Give us the uh, decider. Yeah, I mean, I'm riding you know. I think that um, at 6-0, and you know, he's still got that undefeated confidence, you know, and that's kind of going to be very important in this fight because I'm not trying to be Mr. Uh, Debbie Downer or, or Mr. Disrespect here, but I'm thinking Sam Patterson is probably bottom three, maybe the worst prospect that came off contender series last year. Don't at me on that. Don't want to be added, but I think it's just a fact. Uh, Sam Patterson just skated by in that fight. We just was getting absolutely hit so hard. And, and he just has that neck and that chin where it's like, you could just see a devastating knockout coming in his future because his defense isn't very sound. 
uh, and he really likes the stand up game. So, I mean, Sam Patterson, yeah, he could he could probably you know tape him out and, and maybe stay on his feet for for a few minutes here. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to turn into a grappling scramble, and Yanal's going to end up you know with his arms around this guy's neck. Uh, I know that he's super tall for the division, so it might add you know a little bit of a struggle there. But Yanal's knockout power mixed in with the with the takedowns, I think that he's going to be able to find a find the button here. So. Even though Sam Patterson fighting at home, this is a tough one, man. This is a really tough one. But like Dano was saying, I'm going to ride front kicks, fighter of the week. Hopefully he's good for it. Sam Patterson has been chin before, and Yanal throws bombs. Ash Moose is going to be the pick. We are on to the main event of the prelims. We have Jack Shore making his featherweight debut versus Maquan Amir Khani. Jack Shore, that's my guy. That's my fighter of the week. So you know I'm picking him, all right? I think stylistically, good matchup for him. He's not going to get overwhelmed on the feet. If anything, he's going to be determining the pace. He's going to have to stuff a few takedowns, but he's got that 80% takedown defense, and I don't think he's going to panic if the fight gets to the ground because he does have some good BJJ of his own. Um Got to avoid the first round sub as always against Maquan Amir Khani, but I think it's smooth sailing once he hears that first bell, gets to his corner and comes back out for the second. So Jack Shore, I don't, he's probably going to get round two or three submission. That's going to be the pick from Goosey. CEO, let's hear it. I'm very scared in this fight for Jack Shore. Um, just because Amar Khani is like that, that first round wonder. I mean, this guy falls off a cliff after about four and a half minutes. So I think if Jack Shore can get through the first, the first round, I think that, yeah, we're looking good. I mean, we're looking real good because Makwan, you know, he can't even hide it. He, he gets so tired in fights and, and it happens pretty quick, but it's because he comes out hot. He comes out hot. He comes out throwing running teeps. He'll just straight up jump at your neck. Uh, and he's vet savvy, too. So he knows how to finish finish guys. Uh, Jack Shore, you know, we've seen him club and subbed. You know, that scares me. So the first round, I'm definitely, you know, going to be sitting on the edge of my seat. But I think that Jack Shore is going to be able to edge him out in two, three. Um, definitely tough thing to ask. Like I'm saying, I think Maquan's going to win round one. I think Jack Shore is going to be in trouble in round one. Uh, he's not like seasoned enough. I don't think that he's really seen this kind of shit before. I think Maquan's going to be a whole nother blast. I know he fought Ricky Simone, but Maquan's just on a whole nother breed of blast. So I'm sketchy. I think he, I think he barely edges it out, but if anyone's going with Maquan, I, I can easily see why, you know? Yes, sir. Dano, let's hear it. I'm all over Jack Shore. I'm a big Jack Shore fan. I think uh, this fight works out pretty well for him because Maquan does have a little bit of gas gas issues in his past couple fights. Um, and Jack Shore is a bantamweight, right? This fight is going to be up at 145. Jack Shore is going to be able to put on a couple pounds. I know CEO said uh, the Ricky Simone, he got rocked, dropped, and then submitted. I think adding that extra weight, or maybe not maybe not cutting as much weight will help him take a couple more punches, be a little more durable on the feet, um, and I think it'll definitely help in the ground game. So I love a Jack Shore um, late finish, definitely late sub. Um, that's what I'm rocking with. Yeah, making that jump up from Bantamweight, more technical division there at 135, but you can never be sure of an undefeated prospect coming off a knockout loss or moving up weight class, but Jack Shore is going to be the pick. So uh, that's it for the prelims here. We're on to the main card. What a card it's going to be. 